Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This week is the week that I finally start making Winifred's dress. I am so excited because, like I've said in the previous couple of videos, Winnie is my unicorn. Um, I know it's been a long time coming. I know that the lead up for you guys must feel like forever because you're getting bits and pieces here and there, but I promise you everything was completely worth the wait. So without further ado, let's jump in. In true Robin cosplay style, I am going to be butchering multiple patterns in order to make this happen. Um, Winifred has three dresses, not one, not two, but three. And most people, most of the store-bought costume versions of Winnie's dress is just a one-piece dress. A lot of people skim it down to two, but there's three. There's the purple chemise. She has her green ombre kirtle or outer petticoat and then she has her green olivey to hunter green with smatterings of purple magic velvet dress um a lot of the costume reproductions are one piece which for a costume reproduction that you're buying for 25 30 40 bucks okay um, and then a lot of people who are DIYing make the chemise and kirtle one piece uh, for ease, I guess. And by what they do, and a lot of times what they do is they just cut what would be the kirtle up the center and put in a purple panel. Um, I am going to do my best to try to get the chemise and kirtle separate. And then of course the the olive the olivey hunter green um, overdress. <sighs> Girl, she a lot of work. So I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna get going on this. Layer one of Winnie's dress is the purple chemise with the lace spiderweb gloves attached just above the elbow. Layer two is the green ombre layer that has a mossy green organza bell sleeve. And then layer three is our olive green and purple magic spattered velvet outer dress. To get Winnie's kirtle and chemise, I'm going to be using Simplicity's 8866. Um, and then fabric wise, for both of them, I bought a 10 yard bolt of unbleached muslin. I bought a purple spider web cable runner for her sleeves, for her um, fingerless gloves that is attached to her chemise. And then I'm also going to be using some green organza. Everything except the purple table runner are going to be getting a dye job of some sort. For the chemise, I'm going to be dyeing it a deep purple. I'm predominantly going to be using the eggplant with a few drops of uh, traditional purple to take some of the red out because this one leans a little bit more blue. And then for the kirtle, which has a ombre effect, we're going to be using dark green and apple green. And then I want to take this organza 
and bring it from a mint color up to more of a sage green and to do that i'm going to use sandstone sapphire blue and chocolate brown in the writ dye more line because those work better for synthetics yes this will give me a green <laughs> For the chemise layer, I'm adding six inches to the front piece, and for the kirtle layer, I'm deducting one inch from the front piece, and then it'll get cut on the green. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the facing layers. And then for the purple sleeve, I'm just cutting it right along the cut line. That's it. For the four pieces of the front of the kirtle, I'm sewing two sets of two together to make the very front flaps. So I ended up sewing across the top of this after I cut off an additional half an inch. It would have come to about here. Um, but I wanted my kirtle to sit a smidgen lower on my torso than my chemise. And now I'm going to press these front pieces in this position. Now I'm going to pin my kirtle front piece one to the front side piece matching my notches and then working my way down the skirt. I'm going to do that both to the left and the right. So because I ended up self-lining this piece, I trimmed this base of the L off of the lining, the facing, and then I surged my raw edges here, and I'm just going to sew this, continuing up my 5A seam allowance. And from here, I sew the entire rest of the dress and the chemise together according to Simplicity's directions. Once the kirtle came out of the green dye bath, I ran it through the washing machine and then it went back into the dye with just dark green and I only submerged it about up to the waistline, allowing the dye to wick the rest of the way down. Not a good angle. Okay, so I spent the last two days 
dip dyeing all of my fabric. Um, the reason that I hand dyed everything, instead of just buying muslin, I'm not really sure if I mentioned this previously. The reason that I hand dyed everything is because um, that's how Disney does it. <laughs> Disney doesn't just walk into a fabric store and be like, I want this. Um, everything is custom made. Um, so, that's what I did. But, I'm going to iron everything. I'm going to iron everything because it's a little wrinkly. It's not awful, but it's a little wrinkly. Um, I'm going to iron on the purple. I'm going to iron the top half of it. And then on the bottom half of it, I'm going to do some primitive pleating. Um, it's kind of like that Grecian goddess pleating that you do to fabric to get it to crinkle. Um, but I'm going to do that. Uh, and then I'm going to finish assembling it. Hi! Hello! Yes. I don't know if you've seen this, I'm being smacked. Hello. Oh man. This makes me feel like Madame Carlotta from the Haunted Mansion. Maybe I should do her next. <gasps> what do you guys think? Haunted Mansion next? The chemise and the kirtle are completely done for my Winifred cosplay. Um, the last time we saw each other face to face, I had just finished dyeing all of the fabric. I assemb the assembly process from there was really simple. I just did my side seams, added the sleeves according to the package instructions. And then from there, once the sleeves were in, I added my grommets using my absolute favorite grommet setting method, which is super foolproof. And I end up with perfectly set grommets every single time. And then all I did was lace the front up on the kirtle with um, a gold shoelace. So yay. <laughs> I will put the link, a link in the description box for all of my tools, all of my dye colors, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and so now it is on to the velvet portion of the dress. Um, other than changing the way that the front hangs and cutting off that front portion and cutting off some of the length in the front to give it the high low everything about this dress is assemble according to the instructions that come from the manufacturer other than that i'm leaving off the lining so it's just skip the lining portions and i'm gonna hem everything instead of lining it um you know because <laughs> It's still a thousand degrees outside, which is what happens when you live in Seton's butt crack. Um, yeah, so I'll give you a, like, 
<laughs> quickies on that one on how I did everything and from there it really is just how we decorate it. I'm so excited that this is coming along right. I'm, I'm, okay, let me get to it. <laughs> to make Winnie's iconic green dress, I'm going to be using this dark olive stretch velvet. I got it from fabric.com. I will put a link for it in the description box below. And then I'm gonna be using these two patterns. I'm gonna be using the sleeves from this McCall's $49.97. And I'm going to be using the body of this coat, Butterick 5425. I'm gonna make a few alterations to it by trimming this section of the coat off. And I'm also going to uh, play with the length a little bit because Winnie's dress is a high-low hemline. And so I am going to give this a high-low hemline to match that. But the body of the jacket is exactly what I want for Winnie's dress. So not too many alterations. I'm gonna be using this four millimeter gold pearl beading um, as the detail down the front. And I'm gonna be using these um, frog buckles for the clasps at the top of the sleeves. These were a much um, pinky rose gold than I really wanted. So I taped them to a piece of cardstock and I gave them a shot of um, an antique gold spray paint. And then I set them aside to dry for like a week before touching them again. Don't forget to take the mandatory fur baby break. Isn't that nice? But it's looking a little too Professor McGonagall, so how do we fix that? Let's add some paint. I'm using the purple color shot to add the smatterings of magic all over the coat. I'm going very lightly to start and building as I go because I don't want my fabric to feel crunchy from the paint. I'm using one part of gold and tan and one part gold, mixing them together to paint the ruins along the front of Winnie's dress. I am keeping a bowl of water handy so that I can keep my brush moist at all times so that way it seeps into the fabric a little better and keeps the fabric from getting crunchy. And then here I am using a um, button. It's a two and three quarter or to three inch button and I'm using a water soluble chalk pencil. You can get these in the um, quilting section of your fabric store. 
to kind of give myself an idea of how big to make the runes um, that run down the front of her dress. And then I took into consideration the fact that the original dress did not have these painted on. Originally, the fabric was a white silk velvet that was then dyed green and then they went back and bleached the runes into place. So I took into consideration how would this green dye fade under bleach, which is why I added a lot of the golden tan. I wanted more of a golden ochre kind of color to act as the color of my ruin so I could replicate that bleachy look. Um, and then the other thing that I found was really interesting was that none of the runes that are on Winnie's dress are real runes. The artist team was very specific to not use anything that might either bring bad luck or potentially insult anyone. So they're all either things that kind of look like runes that were changed or just completely made up. So I followed suit and made my runes to be things that are symbolic to me, like Deathly Hollow symbol and the infinity symbol. And then dead center between her shoulder blades, she has a very strange ruin, but it's very iconic and visible of what looks like three legs coming out of a center, running running legs coming out of the center. Um, I used a four inch wide mouth mason jar lid to act as my um, template for that. And then again, I'm just using my chalk pencil to act as my sketch, um, how I want to sketch it out. And remembering the direction that knees and the ankles bend. So drawing my thighs, bend the knees, bend the ankles. And then I went back in and painted it the exact same way with slightly watered down version of my fabric paint. And then it's got two dragonflies coming out of the top of it, which I again freehanded. And if I was working with silk, you bet your bottom dollar, I would absolutely be doing this with the dye and then bleach method that the original team did. But, uh, you know, real velvet's a little out of my cosplayer budget. And here it is with all of my runes painted on. As you can see, I put some things that are special to my nerddom. Now, her sleeves are also very iconic and recognizable in the fact that they have uh, flowers on them that I am interpreting as um, Venus flytraps. So to get these Venus flytrap flowers, I painted two almondy shapes, um, kind of the way, a rudimentary way of drawing an eyeball, as long as they're stacked on top of each other, and then a nice squiggly line to act as the stem, and making sure to give the Venus flytrap some tongue. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to give them tongue. Yeah, this is supposed to be a wholesome show. I'm making sure they have a tongue. Yeah, that way. There you go. And I'm doing that along the top, front and back of both sleeves.
for the serpent on the sleeves, it's a two-headed serpent, which I am hand drawing out. Again, I'm I'm still using a I'm still using Taylor's chalk. I'm just I'm using a different one at this point. Um, and again, exact same manner as everything else. I'm keeping my fabric paint slightly watered down. I'm still working with a mixture of my golden tan and gold. Um, and instead of completely filling in the serpent's bodies, I'm only making scale-esque print by random geometric shapes. I even hid my kiddo's name in the random geometric scales. To make the serpents on the back of the skirt, I really wanted the left and the right half of the skirt to be symmetric. So I pinned my pattern together so that I could make it the left and the right symmetrical. I traced out my serpent. I'm going to cut this out and then pin it to the dress. And I'm going to use this as my stencil to then go ahead and paint my serpents in place. And because this is all water soluble tailored chalk, it washes right out with a little bit of wet, with a wet finger even. So Winnie has a pair of doves on the small of her back, just above her rump. Um, and I, again, like the serpents on the base of the skirt, I want them to be symmetrical. So I took the exact same image and printed it out, you know, printed one in mirror image. I'm going to cut them out. And again, I'm just going to use them as a stencil, just like I did with our serpent on the uh, hem of the skirt. Okay, I pinned them onto the locations that I wanted them. I tried them on to make sure that they were symmetrical. I also measured them from the distance, uh, the distance from the bottom of my template to my hemline to make sure that they were as close to possible, close to symmetrical as possible. So I'm gonna go in with my chalk pencil, trace them, and paint them outlines of them exactly the same way as I did with my serpents. Winnie's dress catches the light in a really cool way that it makes it look like there's something shiny and glittery on it. Um, no, not using glitter. <laughs> um, but what I'm doing to replicate whatever that bling is, that shine, I'm using these sequins and little seed beads that I found. Um, the sequins are in the color mosaic, and I got the entire bag of them for $1.99. And then these um, seed beads are by Blue Moon, and they are um, in the color oil slick. I wanted to go with something that would blend in that you wouldn't be able to see that great. Um, like it, they, they don't stand out in daylight, but the, the light just catches them just right, which is why I chose the colors that I did. And then I'm placing them randomly throughout the dress to attach them. I just threaded my needle And then I put the sequin on and now I'm doing the seed bead and then I'm going back down through the sequin hole and came in. tying this off in a knot. And then I'm just doing that randomly throughout. I've already done a sleeve. Put 
how the light catches it. It's really pretty. Okay, I just want to start off right now this segment by saying I apologize for the crappy audio. I am using my onboard mic because as if this project wasn't already a little bit cursed from the start, my uh, microphone mic, like, just <laughs> dead. So a lot of my filming, a lot of my work that I did have voiceovers for is just gone. It is. <laughs> so, that being said, um, as far as the serpent belt buckle on the front of the dress, I tried a slew of different concepts. I tried doing clay and with the intentions of making a, like, a resin mold. I tried starting with a brooch and adding serpents to it. <laughs> Ultimately, after three days of banging my head against my desk, I came to the final decision that I am not going to succeed at everything I try, and it is okay to outsource to somebody who is good at a specific thing. So, Instead of trying a third, if not more expensive route, I purchased, you know, I purchased a belt buckle from this shop on Etsy. They happen to be located in Salem, Massachusetts, so I felt it was absolutely the perfect opportunity to put a little Salem on my dress. That being said, I will see you guys in the reveal. The very long, long-awaited reveal. And I love you so, so much. So this is the packaging. How adorable is that? They have custom little mailers. And their tissue paper is precious. Oh my gosh. Greetings from Salem, Massachusetts. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, this is the cutest. <gasps> the level of detail. Okay, I can't get this to throw off. All right, I'm just going in. The level of detail here is so, oh my God. Little postcard. Okay, pull. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here, I I think this is, <laughs> the level of detail here is so adorable. Oh my gosh. <gasps> all of that, all of oh that, my god. Just for that. These are the belt buckles for my Winnie dress bay. Oh guys. It is so cute. Oops. And they're metal. They're not like plastic. Wow. It even said that it used to be like just a passion and it turned into a full time job making all, making and mailing all this. I, I am thoroughly impressed.
Wrap up time. I'm having a really hard time hearing my voice come out of Winnie's face. Um, I... Hello. <laughs> my dear sweet book. Come home. Book. So, I am super happy with how everything came out. I think I want to go back and put little pieces of elastic on the points of the sleeves so that uh, they stay. I'm being stared at by the lady getting in her car next to me. <laughs> but whatever. Um, I did not glue my widow's peak down. It's there. It's just not glued down because it's 86 degrees and like 95% humidity. It's really hard to talk in these teeth. So it's like 85 degrees and like 95% humidity. So um, I didn't glue my wig down. I'm wearing a wig fix instead. Um, but so the widow's peak keeps rolling. So if I was to wear this to a convention or whatever the case may be, I might be a little bit more conscientious of that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. I had, I've had a few people stop me. Uh, I had a lady pull up to me at a red light and you know, try to take my picture through the window. <laughs> I can sleep 